This is the E-NASCAR College iRacing Series. Big drinks or big prize. The cars may be virtual, but the racing and scholarships are real. fans and welcome to iRacing's coverage of the 8th race for the 2023-24 eNASCAR College iRacing Series powered by Nace Star League. Live from the virtual Nashville Super Speedway in Lebanon, Tennessee. Shane Spike alongside Blake McCandless this evening and Blake, this track is not quite a super speedway in the sense that we think of it. It's not quite an intermediate track but it's also too big to be a short track so how do you classify it? How do you approach it? It's hard to approach it, James. Uh, I know even competing in this car at this track a number of years ago in the eNASCAR Contender Series that this track is so difficult to try and get a hold of, particularly in these NASCAR Xfinity Series cars. you got a lot of power. You don't have a lot of downforce necessarily. This car loves to slide around if you barely miss the groove at this racetrack. So although it may not be a mile and a half, although it may not be the short track, it has the characteristics of a very, very narrow racetrack. It's a tough track to get a hold of and I think that's why we'll see the who's who of this series be able to wrap their arms around it and compete very well tonight. Let's take a look at where we've been in our journey through the college series schedule this year. Started off in Daytona, then went to Charlotte, Dover, Watkins Glen, Michigan opened up the spring semester back in January, Darlington, Talladega, where Garrett Lowe won last time out, Nashville tonight, and that leaves us with one race after this evening, the championship race for this season of the college series, May 3rd, a Friday night at Homestead Miami Speedway. Blake? You have run this place in the Contender Series, as you said. You know this place pretty well, I think, from your exploits as a driver. Take us through Nashville Super Speedway. I may have run it, but I didn't really ever figure it out. And it's still tripping me up even all these years later. But as you mentioned, a mile and a third around this racetrack, bankings in the corners that go up to 14 degrees, six degrees through the tri-oval here at Nashville Super Speedway. You can think of Jimmy Mullis, and we've seen some great racing in the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. The All-Star Race was here a couple of years ago. Jimmy Mullis won it last year in a somewhat controversial finish, but a thriller nonetheless. It was able to get it done. But again, looking at this racetrack, long sweeping corners that if you barely miss the bottom or you barely miss the racing groove uh, you're going to be in for a tough corner and it is tough to put together 90 laps here at this racetrack so these drivers going to have their hands full trying to figure this place out also really easy to get stuck up in freight train on that top side if you get stuck up there let's take a look at the starting grid for this race Garrett Lowe Fast man in town. The UNC Charlotte 49er starts the pole with a fast time of 30.158 seconds to his outside Detroit Mercy's Andy Truppiano. Cal State Fullerton's Logan Clampett and Daniel Falkingham for the University of Maine at Machias roll off from row number two. Row three is where you'll find Michigan's Matthew Swack and Oklahoma's Mario Miranda. Back in road four, Dylan Alt for Sacramento State will start from seventh. Caleb Bryan with Missouri S&T will go from the eighth position. Matthew Morton, he'll be one we'll have to watch for from the Ohio State, as well as Austin Farr for Liberty University will go from the outside of row number five. And then to row six, Jose Solis Jr. from Manchester Community College and Jack Coyne for the Rena Lesser Polytech Institute. The Patriot, George Mason, Zach Sprouse starts on the inside of row seven to his outside Saddleback College's John Forbes. Eastern Washington's James Cioli and Lane Gray is representing the Shockers of Wichita State roll off from row eight. 17th on the grid is Dallas Baptist Christian Charbonneau. He's joined on the outside of row nine by Auburn's Reese Bayham. And now outside the top 20, Aaron Brown for Eastern Shore Community College will start next to Brandon Schullenberger from Wingate. 
Row 11, you'll see Arizona State represented by Garrett Vitton, as well as Ryan Doucette representing Southern Maine. Back at row 12, it's Jack A. Clemens for Virginia Tech and Chris Bryant from Methodist University in Fayetteville. St. Charles Community College's Anthony Burroughs rolls off from row 13 alongside Hopkinsville Community College's Nate Stewart. Jonathan Evans from Western Connecticut and Kent State's Aaron Will Rooney starts in 28th, 29th, and 30th on the grid are Elias Tullison from Eastern Oregon and Sean Pellick also from the University of Michigan. The Lancers represented by Jeremy O'Burns for Longwood and Kaloa Hawkins, the other Charlotte 49er in this field to reach start in the 32nd position. C.L. Smith for the Auburn Tigers will go from 33rd, 34th. Alexander Hyder for St. John's River State College. And back to row 18, Chris Fritz from Delaware and Steven Wilson, somebody we'll have to watch for driving up through the field for the Hawkeyes. Final three starters are Ball State's Daniel Nanny, Reynolds Community College's Joe Armstrong, and Elliot White representing the Maryland Terrapins out of the Big Ten, your 39th and final starter in tonight's race. They cross under the flag stand and lights go off on the pace car. So before we get green, Blake, let's take a moment and go through tonight's race analysis and see what these drivers are going to have to tackle over the course of the evening. We'll get 90 laps that these drivers are going to have here. The mile and a third Nashville Super Speedway pit road can be very difficult to get down on this racetrack, only 45 miles per hour. And depending on four tires, two tires, I think that'll be a question tonight if we get green flag pit stops. Depends on the amount of time you'll lose. There are four sets of Goodyear Eagles available for these drivers. And I think uh, you kind of get a, a good look right there, James, at somebody that we thought would be towards the front of this field. Great looking race car that J.D. Laird painted there for J.D. Graphics for the Iowa Hawkeye, but he's going to have to do so from the tail end of the field if he wants to go to victory lane yet again in the College Series race. Starting 36 on the grid. That race analysis also brought to you by our friends at Logitech G. Garrett Lowe will start the evening where he left off last month when he was victorious at Talladega Super Speedway. He'll look to make it two in a row as the field comes out of turn four. The pace car makes that hard left-hand turn down on to pit road. They go. We are off and underway with round number eight of the 2023-24 eNASCAR College iRacing Series powered by Day Star League from Nashville. Logan Clampett did not waste any time whatsoever getting to the inside of Andy Truppiano. Clampett already up to second after lap one, and Truppiano had to slide in behind Daniel Falkingham, too. Falkingham was able to get underneath the Detroit Mercy driver, and he's now stuck back in fourth, and he's got Matthews Wack hot on his tail as there's contact a little bit further back. And they're going to wreck out of turn number two. Caution's going to be out, and this could collect a handful of cars. A huge accident off the corner. That's one thing about how these cars funnel off of turn two and turn four here, James, that there's not a lot of racing room. Everybody kind of has to follow the exact same line. It's not a very wide racetrack and a wreck that happened, what, about the 10th spot or so on lap two. And there are a ton of cars that are going to suffer significant damage in this one. Not to jump ahead too much, but the first thing I noticed about that wreck wasn't necessarily who got caught up in it, but who made it through. You know who snuck through that one? Want to take a guess? I'm going to guess Wilson was probably one of them. They got a little bit lucky getting through that, but there were not many. And it all started up here, kind of in the middle of one and two. Look for the 52 machine of Jack Coyne, kind of that bright teal 52 that you see there. It gets a little bit out of shape. Gets those left side tires onto the apron, and that's just a surefire way to be all out of sorts. And unfortunately, not able to check up and get it into the back of him as John Forbes as he was sliding it off the corner. And chaos, just pure chaos ensued. How much damage do the drivers that were involved in that wreck have? A and B, how much does it affect you, especially here where it's not the fastest track Nashville Super Speedway, but it's fast enough to where if you've got any form of sheet metal damage, it definitely can drag you back a little bit. 
Well, a couple of drivers suffered pretty significant damage. Uh, James Cioli, Lane Graves, Aaron Brown, just a couple of drivers that at least I can see that are going to be required to pit for repairs uh, through the course of that caution. But it, you made a good point there, James, that this track is is fast enough that you need you need the downforce. You don't need any aerodynamic damage. And although these cars are, are a little more durable uh, than they have been in the past, the new damage model here on iRacing kind of conforming to the composite bodies that these NASCAR Xfinity Series cars have. Uh, but it, it's still even a little bit of damage here. I think you, you lose a lot of side force. It makes it really difficult uh, to try to navigate these corners that are already tough enough as it is. And oh, by the way, Stephen Wilson started 36 by virtue of sneaking through that wreck. He's already up to 19th. So watch the 10 machine. Now, uh, Kansas City Pioneers, one of the teams in the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series, they love to do a lot of really, really big things when the Real Life Cup Series comes to Kansas in May and September. Last year, I know they had a lot of really fun stuff. I, Wyatt Tinsley drove and uh, drove for them last year's drive from this year. I think he made like a smoothie out of a blender at a price chopper, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, they, they do a whole bunch of cool stuff. So. Uh, a reminder to get up close and personal with the elite eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series drivers who will be making appearances throughout the weekend. So much cool stuff that's going to take place out at Kansas Speedway with the Kansas City Pioneers. They're going to have all of the sim rigs you could possibly want out that way. You're going to have Wyatt Tinsley and company, I believe, making another in-person appearance. And if you want an opportunity to get up close and personal with uh, some of the young stars of eNASCAR, Graham Bolin, I believe, also out there, too. A good opportunity to make your way out to Kansas that weekend if you're in the area. Base car is off again. We're back to green flag racing. Garrett Lowe with the good jump. Clear of fucking him and of clamp at five out of car length. And Trupiano again stuck on the outside as everybody begins to come back up to full song. And I wonder how cautious these drivers are going to be given how much calamity we've already been through in this race. I think you're going to see they're, they're going to be pretty calm. And as we kind of saw in that opening lap, you're going to see everybody very quickly try to get down to the bottom. That's the way to go, at least early on here in Nashville Super Speedway. I, don't, I, I imagine by the end of this race, though, James, we, with a lot of green flag racing, a lot of cars out here, again, kind of the dynamic track uh, physics that have been updated and continue to be approved upon here in iRace and will kind of open up that second lane, that third lane a little bit here at this racetrack. But for now and early on, while there's not a ton of rubber down on the racetrack, it's going to be all about getting to the bottom. And you can see making good use of it right there. Daniel Falkingham just getting down uh, in front of Logan Clampett for that second position. We saw Clampett kind of do the same thing on the initial start of the race that he was uh, able to make it work from that third position. But restarting here in second uh, is a particular challenge uh, because of what you saw right there. It's hard to get down to the bottom. Especially early on at this point in the race, like you mentioned, Blake, because there's not a lot of rubber up top. And to your point, the first side-by-side -side battle that I see in the field is all the way back in 13th. So everybody in the top 10 just sort of clicking off laps at this stage, trying to keep the track position they've got, prepare for things. Is There goes Mario Miranda to uh, make me look like a fool and put a commentator's curse in the field and go side by side with Andy Trippiano. It's a case where you kind of, if everybody's gunning for the same lane, there's a little bit of clean air that's available. And, you know, there are a lot of stack ups that kind of happen through the course of the field and everybody's kind of vying for that same inside line. So. Uh, Trupiano trying to make things work, but we also know that going up there a little bit early, it's a little bit tougher on the tires, but uh, as we take a look at the progress that Stephen Wilson has already made very early on in this race up through the field, Wilson up to 13th, you mentioned kind of started back at 36th, was 17th on that restart when they fired off, and he's already made up a handful of positions, so 
Uh, can't imagine that it, it was going to be easy. I saw Wilson, he went out and tried to make a lap, but kind of went out a little bit too late within the five minute time allotment that these drivers have to put a time down in qualifying and he wasn't able to complete a lap before the clock ran out. So uh, put himself behind the eight ball a little bit early, but making quick work of this field so far up to the 13th spot already. Uh, part of it, I think, is you take the lucky breaks where you get them. But beyond that, you know, there is also the fact that he is the defending champion of the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola Iris Series. Just, we jump to another driver that competes in the Coach Series out of Jonesport, Maine. Daniel Falkingham races in the Coach Series with Joe Gibbs Racing. Tonight, it's the University of Maine at Machias. Kind of early on. Letting Garrett Lowe get a little bit of a lead, just trying to settle in right now in that second position. And I think if you can't get that clean air initially that Garrett Lowe is going to be able to enjoy. Again, this is a fast enough racetrack as these drivers get down to, at least early on in this run, about 130, 135 or so in the corners through the center. It's enough to create a little bit of dirty air if you're not out front there. So I think if your Falkingham wasn't able uh, to obviously get out and get that clean air on the initial jump. So just trying to save those tires a little bit, give himself a little bit of distance to Lowe and, and just hope to see Lowe kind of wash up off the corner a little bit more, make some mistakes, get a little bit of clean air on the left side of that nose and, and see if you can try and chase him down. And it, in fact, he did off the two. Lowe kind of pushed up a little bit and that's so easy to do here, James. And just those little minute mistakes here at Nashville with how this corner and the exit of both corners kind of sneak up on you it's a very easy mistake to make uh, to just push a little bit tight but it will lose you a ton of time at this racetrack the kind of mistake that you can only make so much before you start giving up time to people behind you and i think that's the challenge for low right now yes you've got the lead but in theory you don't necessarily have to go out and run any harder than you need to to maintain the track position you know if you're tucked up right in front of Daniel Falkingham, but you're still the leader, then you still enjoy, especially the aero advantages that being that first car in line gives you. So uh, I think there's a big question as to how much Garrett Lowe is going to push. And then how much does the dirty air off the back of his car affect Falkingham, affect Clampett, affect everybody else as mostly, oh, what? Yeah, no, still everybody in the top 10 single file, though I did see they're getting a little bit racier, a little bit further back. battling hard outside through the top 10 as we're going to catch up here uh, with the number one car of Reese who unfortunately wrapped up in that early incident. Reese, I know, I know it's tough to be sitting on pit road this early, but just kind of describe what happened in front of you there with all that calamity off the of turn two. Yeah, I was looking back at the replay. It looks like um, Caleb just kind of came across Jack's nose a little bit and everyone just stacked up on the bottom line and washed up the track and didn't really have anywhere to go, unfortunately, you know. Yeah, I was feeling good about the coming into the race, uh, especially in um, kind of warm up and practice and everything. So I uh, was looking forward to it, but it is what it is. <laughs> it's a tough deal, but uh, I could see, you know, you're set up there with your rig. I'd imagine there's a dorm room of some sorts that you're sitting in and being able to compete tonight. Is it something often that if you're on iRacing, this is kind of the setup you have and you're able to compete on here, uh, even kind of while you're at college these next few weeks? Yeah, yeah, this is uh, my main setup that I've been using for a few years now. Um, slowly upgraded from just kind of a desk and a cheap wheel. Um, but yeah, I've really enjoyed being able to do this um, eNASCAR series during college. It's been a, a great way to represent Auburn and um, what a great university it is. I'm just happy that I can uh, compete on a stage like this, so it's been fun. Well, which things would have gone better for you tonight? I know we have another college race before we wrap things up, and I know next couple of weeks, study hard. I know finals are probably coming up here the next few weeks, so we we'll wish you luck with that and the rest of your endeavors here on iRacing, and hopefully we'll see you back one last time before we call it a semester. Yeah, sounds good. I appreciate it, guys. Reese Bayham, a mechanical engineering major and a senior at Auburn, so going to be graduating in a few weeks. And that's certainly something I think as we look forward to the future, you know, you might see a, a rotating cast of drivers because in theory, you're only eligible for the college series so long as you are a student. That's the whole point of this is for drivers to 
have the opportunity to earn scholarship money while they are completing their studies as we go on board with Kealoha Hankins, one of the UNC Charlotte drivers, uh, originally from Honolulu, Hawaii. Right now, just being a little bit patient, Hankins a little further on back in the field, running in 22nd, and you know, he's done a pretty good job too, uh, making up some spots. Started back at 32nd, finds himself in the 22nd position right now, and you know, I love here for Hankins. It kind of reminds me of my sim racing days when I was in school that you don't need a fancy setup and everything. You just got the basic wheels strapped to a desk. I remember doing the same thing uh, when I raced on the same laptop that I was taking notes on uh, in my classes a, a little bit later on today. Not that I ever did it during class. Uh, do want to clarify that. Well, it wouldn't have been good to be doing that, it's especially at a school where I went to where class size was only about 10 or 15 students. So it, it would have been pretty easy to get caught doing that. But uh, Right now, Hankins trying to catch up to uh, the other Charlotte 49er that so far has been setting the pace here through 22 laps in Garrett Lowe. We've talked a lot, I think, over the course of these college series races about the program that UNC Charlotte has put together, the mechanical engineering works that they do as we go on board with the Delaware Blue Hen in the field. Chris Fritz a little bit further back in the number 65, currently riding in the 25th position. Doing a solid job there. You can see kind of in three and four, dipping that left side down a little bit, getting a little bit of clean air uh, versus some of those drivers ahead of him, Jeremy O'Burns and Elias uh, Tellefson that are doing things a little bit different. But also you mentioned kind of the variety of setups. Well, if you don't have enough room from a monitor and you don't always do when uh, you're in a dorm room and you probably have a roommate along with you, the virtual, the VR set is, uh, is something that you can definitely implement as well. And Chris Fritz, uh, doing that to perfection right now that uh, yeah it may not have all the all the room to, to put down the monitor amongst the books and other things that you would keep in your dorm room but uh, keeping the VR uh, set going strong here as we almost have a battle for the race lead off of two Lowe's lead was about two and a half tenths or so the last couple of laps but Logan Clampett showing strong here and looking for the lead into three Logan Clampett decided of his own volition to lead the Coke Series a few years ago and wanted a little bit of a breather and wanted some time away just to, to sort things out. But it's not like the skill that got him into the Coke Series ever went away. And I think it's very fitting that in this year where he's in the E-NASCAR qualifying iRacing Series, trying to race his way back in to the Coke Series for 2025, that we've seen him be very, very strong in every single college series race uh, not only this year, but uh, also in the past year as well. You remember last spring when he won three races in a row. Hasn't gotten a victory this season yet, but he has been in contention, it seems like, pretty much every race. And now you get a good look on board the Trabuco Canyon California Natives machine. He is right on the rear bumper of Garrett Lowe for the race fleet. I don't know if there's a more sim racer thing to do than retire and then never actually retire. And uh, Logan Clampett may be kind of putting that on display right here with all that he's done in the college series, kind of keeping him, kind of keeping that competitive spirit alive, but especially in these NASCAR Xfinity Series cars, James. I know we've done uh, a variety of vehicles throughout the course of this series, but this is the one that I think Logan Clampett by far is most comfortable with. He, he's competing all the time. Uh, in be fixed and be open series on the platform and this is the car that he just absolutely loves so I uh, can imagine that he was pretty confident coming into this race and trying to set up a pass here on Garrett Lowe again I would say that 44 is probably just a tick faster than that 49 but you could see all the different ways that Clampett is trying to set up a pass it's difficult to do here at Nashville but he runs a little bit higher in the three goes for the crossover and will try to take the race lead here from Garrett Lowe on lap 28. The most intriguing thing to me is he completes the pass and we get our first lead change of the evening for a split second before Lowe cuts underneath clamp it down the back straightaway is that Daniel Falkingham hasn't really made up all that much time while these two have been door to door. You figure as they battle that we'd see Falkingham creep up and maybe get into this battle a little bit, but not yet as Lowe tried to maintain the momentum on the bottom, but Clampett's run on the high line was just too strong and Logan Clampett now has outright control of this race on lap 29. I think Clampett now, he gets in the clean air. He has a little bit more control of this race. And as the laps kind of continue to tick on, you can see Lowe just sliding around a little bit, not able to be as stable as that number 44. And uh, 
Clampett really gets to enjoy that clean air probably uh, well, again, I'd imagine at some point we'll see these drivers move just a little bit off the bottom. It, it tends to get pretty loose here if we have a full field running consistent green flag laps like this. And we'll see if they do that as we still have a ton of racing going on back in the field here, James. There's a lot of drivers who are kind of involved in that early incident, trying to make their way back up through the field. We kind of zero in here on Nate Stewart, uh, somebody that didn't have quite the qualifying effort he wanted, but currently sits in the 16th position. Has a good old HCC logo on the hood of that Toyota Supra and, you know, somebody who's competed on the iRacing service for a long time and just kind of methodically managing his race right now, trying to get back up towards the top ten. Stewart's an interesting case as you see a big block there on the screen just a little bit further back behind him because officially he goes to Hopkinsville Community College, but he is a longtime Kentucky Wildcat fan, so I know He's had a busy week. They brought in Mark Pope from BYU to become their new head basketball coach. We know how much that program means there. Uh, so uh, if you like UK, if you're a Wildcat person and, and you want somebody to cheer for, uh, Nate Stewart, probably your best shot, your best representative. It's somebody who gets where you're coming from as he tries to work over Caleb Bryan of the 28 machine. That would be for the 15th position. Stewart also has just a little bit of damage on the right front of his Toyota Supra, but not all that much. Car, for the most part, is clean. See them trying to lap Aaron Brown. Again, he was another driver that was involved in that early skirmish. Still has a ton of damage, but we'll try to ride things out here uh, with all the laps that he can possibly put down here. A great looking paint scheme here that this number 28 of Caleb Bryan has representing Missouri S&T. Did a really solid job early on in this race, just trying to manage so far, but still a, re a really simple but great looking race car. I mean, that looks like something that's pretty much straight out of Ryan Williams's uh, junior motorsports camp. Something simple, but yet has a nice little pop to it. If there's one thing that Missouri SNC has done well and, and sort of established a reputation for in this series, it's the utilization of chrome or chrome like colors on these schemes. The Stuart ducks to the inside of Brian. But uh, every time we see a Missouri SNC driver, they've had some sort of chrome paint scheme this year. And, and you're right, Blake. Oh, fabulous. Every single time is uh, get a little bit physical there. And Anthony Burroughs is tucked up behind Stuart and Brian as well. Well, I think that's just a case there that Brian's sliding back. He's kind of falling back as this run goes on, and Stort's just a little upset that he's holding him up. You know, Nate Stort thinks he's a little bit faster, and I think, uh, you know, they were side-by-side -side off of two, and then Stort comes up and squeezes Brian up into the wall. I think it's just one of those cases where, hey, man, I know you're, I know you're struggling, and it's really difficult to pass here at Nashville, but you don't need to be making my job a little bit harder as uh, Brian is just hanging on struggling right here to see Anthony Burroughs another former eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series driver uh, who's trying to do the same thing get by Caleb Bryan and a reminder that this is all happening for the 15th position which means that these drivers still have a ways to go if they want to take home some of the scholarship money that is on offer over the course of the evening. A reminder that it's the top 10 drivers in tonight's field that go away with individual scholarship prizes, uh, just under $4,000 per race. And at the end of it all, when we wrap up at Home Homestead Miami next month, $60,000 in scholarship money will have been given away. And Blake, I feel like we make the point every week that you absolutely would have loved to have paid for some of your tuition at, at Gardner Webb. Shout out to the running Bulldogs uh, this way, because I, I know you probably would have been able to make a few uh, good finishes and probably would have won some scholarship money back in the day. What could have been? I guess that's the question that uh, I'll forever have to answer. And who knows? Maybe we go back for the doctorate someday. But for now, caution is out. And it is Caleb Bryan on the back straightaway just showing him, talking about how great that paint scheme looks for Missouri S&T, uh, but he was really hanging on. He was struggling there as he was kind of falling back outside of the top 15. And unfortunately there, probably just a little bit more of the same as I'm sure he had a little bit of help. And I think indeed he did. There was one other card that I saw kind of scurrying through the grass out of all of that. And Caleb Bryan will bring out our second caution of the evening. James and kind of at an interesting position here as we were kind of going to start talking about the possibility of green flag pit stops and when you wanted to calm down, but I think this caution is going to kind of settle those answers for now. Let's take a look back. 
So here's a look at this. Entering one and two, Daniel Nanny and the 30 machine representing Ball State is the one you want to watch here because Nanny, I think it's tight behind the 22, pushes up just a hair, and there's nowhere for Brian to go, and he just makes contact with the left rear quarter panel of Brian's machine and sends him around, and then Brian stuck spinning down the back straightaway to bring out the second caution. Here's a good look from the St. John's River State College machine in the field. It was just behind us. This is Alexander Hyder that we're on board with and just sneaks through it and makes his way past all the chaos in front of him. So our drivers are on pit road for service. We will take a quick commercial break and then be back with more coverage of the eNASCAR College iRacing Series powered by Nate Starling from Nashville Super Speedway in just a few moments. This is the make or break moment. Oh, man, the oh my goodness. Not just for the day, but for the years to come. This is where a race isn't just about the race. It's about the doors it can open. That kid is amazing. The number of fans wearing your number. This is the chance to carve your name into the history books. This is the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Every time you sit behind the wheel, you buckle up for the unexpected. You get ready to take on the competition, embrace yourself for the chaos, the speed, the weather, the unknown. But above all, when strapping in, you put trust in yourself, your intuition, making your guide to win, your drive to win. He's a winner in this. And nothing is going to stop you from winning. When I hit the wall, it, this thing shook like crazy. I have experienced that in real life, so I can compare. I tend to choose rally games that are really putting the actuators through their paces, and they've been holding up really well. That's exactly how it is in real life. That's the coolest part. What does it take to become a legend? Generations of victory. One of the great masters of the sport. Motor oil in your veins. Does it take irrational confidence? A little bit of last lap magic. What about fandom that runs in the family? A track where every mile becomes a memory. Or maybe it's simply knowing that new legacies are built one lap at a time. The eNASCAR College iRacing Series is brought to you by Coke Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Try and decide. By Logitech G. Through design, engineering, and a love of driving games, Logitech G takes racing simulation to another level. Logitech G, the official wheel and pedals of the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. And by D-Box. Make body and racing simulators become one. Improve your virtual race time with D-Box Motion technology, providing ultra-precise movements and vibration cues while racing online. Welcome back to Nashville Super Speedway for round eight of the eNASCAR College iRacing Series, powered by Nate Starley. Green flag back in the air on lap 42 of 90. And these drivers are trying to race for life, the universe, and everything, it seems, up the front as we go back to full speed. Mario Miranda with a big drive in the middle and nearly lost it. And Stephen Wilson's going to cross over underneath him. 
he had a huge slide on those cold tires as we're starting to see some drivers and Wilson was probably one of the few in particular that really made kind of that second and third groove work, especially in turn three. You could take a really wide entry, kind of arc down through the center in the corner and build up those runs. He was doing it as well as anybody, as we know, as he has had to carve his way all the way up from the 32nd starting position. Mario trying to hang on there in the 99 on the outside, uh, but Wilson may have the preferred lane here, at least early on. Uh, on these cold tires, but right now, uh, Miranda hanging strong there on the top. It's a Big Ten versus Big 12 battle, and Matthew Swack of the Michigan Wolverines is right behind these two as we get a good look at Miranda's setup, the Tulsa, Oklahoma native and student in Norman trying to hang on to the outside. But, Blake, if you run up there and try and pinch Stephen Wilson down, I think you can only do that for so long before you burn off your tires and you start to really fall back and, and then potentially you may end up in the same position that Caleb Bryan found himself in a few moments ago. And Miranda, you could see there's a lot of drivers that kind of have a, a nonchalant look on their face while they're sim racing, but Miranda, man, he is focused. He's on the high side trying to feel every little wiggle out of that race car as Swack tries to slide up and they're going to make a little bit of contact off of turn two. Swack could not quite get just clear as he will lose a handful of positions. Then Miranda's going to get turned into the wall by Nate Stewart. Caution is out as Miranda was up towards the outside wall. Stewart tried to give him a push and it did not go according to plan. I was almost about to say that there was a great job there uh, from Mario Miranda and Zwack for not wrecking in one and two and really impressive work to save it. And then uh, you called it there. Stewart just tried to give a push down the back and he wasn't square. That's, I think, a particularly tricky thing to do in these cars of the NASCAR Xfinity Series. We see it in real life at the plate tracks where it's very difficult to get the front and rear bumpers of cars to line up well because there's a slight curve to every machine. So it's hard to square up and get these pushes to be really lined up properly. And I think that's exactly what we just saw with Nate Stewart and Mario Miranda. Well, and again, that all started in turn two as WAC. And we, we've seen a couple of drivers that are kind of having to make these moves. We saw Clampett make it for the lead, kind of the slide job kind of using the, the bottom lane, moving up into the middle to try and make a pass. And this is where it all starts WAC starts to move up you can see wilson kind of cut down that forces swack to check up in front of miranda he wasn't clear and then the 99 sees stort coming he tries to kind of throw that block and stort says well buddy i'm i'm rolling through the I'm rolling through the straightaway i don't feel necessarily any reason to lift for you there and unfortunately when they made contact they weren't exactly uh weren't exactly lined up we're now joined by Nate Stewart here in the booth. And Nate, that was a wild few laps there. So what did you see from your perspective and, and how did that all shake out from behind the wheel? Yeah, so the way I saw it was him and Swag got together or something. I don't know, I couldn't really see that far. And then he went all the way to the wall and then uh, ended up coming down the track to try to block the bottom, I guess. And then right as I had the momentum on him, he just half committed to blocking the top and uh we just unfortunately got connected i got uh into his right rear and then there was nothing really we could do from that point so uh just an unfortunate circumstance i hate that it happened to him i like mario but i mean sometimes people put themselves in bad places and things like that happen we talked a little bit earlier in the broadcast about your sort of split identity in the college series. You're a student at Hopkinsville Community College, but you're also a massive, massive fan of the Kentucky Wildcats. So how do you sort of balance your allegiance between the two? Well, thankfully, uh, Hopkinsville Community College doesn't have, really have any sports teams or anything that I uh, can follow. Don't get me wrong. I would absolutely love to follow like a community college team, but uh, they don't have any teams I need to follow. But you know, the Cats are going real good this offseason. I'm really glad we have Mark Pope uh, leading the basketball squad now. I think it was time for a change, and I really think Mark Pope's going to do well uh, as a new head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. You heard it from the E-NASCAR world. Nate Stewart is a believer in Mark Pope as 
We'll let Nate get back to business and we will turn our attention to the other side of this. Mario Miranda, the Oklahoma Sooner out of the Big 12. Mario, uh, what did you feel from behind the wheel and, and what happened from that stretch from the start finish line to the back straight? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like running up top in the top five is, is, is kind of a harsh reality because all those guys know each other and I'm kind of like the outsider. So I feel like I feel like they all work together and then it's kind of like me thrown to the side. So I had a feeling Matthew would try to get underneath underneath me. I was kind of I was quicker than him in the last run, but I don't know. I thought I picked a lane. Nate Stewart said I didn't, but Nate's wrecked people before. So I, I don't know. I'm just upset. You know, it's a really good run for us and it's kind of sucks to throw it away like that. Within that stretch of racing, if you were to gauge on a percentage how hard you were racing in that stretch over the last few laps before the incident, could you put a number to it? I mean, it's it's pretty pretty tough racing. Um, these guys are quick. They're they're bad fast, and you know I'm glad to be around them and you know help to help my ego a little bit, knowing that I have the pace to keep up with these coke guys and. I really felt really good on that last run, and I was hoping to get in the top three at some point, but. Um, you know, some things work out, some things don't. So I still got two years, maybe three years of college left. So I'm not done anytime soon. Might not be the night that Mario Miranda wanted, but I figure we are going to see him for many, many more college series races to come in the next few seasons. But that's the thing that stood out to me, Blake, is they were really, really getting after it right before that incident. But that's what you have to do on restart to maintain track position and not go straight to the back. Logan Clampett fired a little bit early in the box. There might have been just outside of it by a hair, but no matter. We go green flag racing and he got a great jump ahead of everybody else. Really, really good stuff there from Clampett to roll on. But big runs here from Lowe, big runs from Falkingham, big runs from everybody as they try and start gaining ground on Clampett. You know, the control here just means so much, and it's because you have so many strong drivers. We just heard it from Mario a couple uh, of seconds ago about how good these drivers are up here at the front of the field and they know that they're racing around the best competition that there is up there so you have to make these moves quickly as a big slide behind that's austin Farr for liberty university in the 79 that you just saw with a big slide through turn one he's going to lose a couple of positions but also james we're kind of seeing a shift here whereas everybody was beelining for the bottom at the very beginning of this race as soon as the drop of the green flag came out uh, that sense has kind of shifted you're starting to see some drivers move up towards the middle of the racetrack as that bottom has lost a little bit of grip you're seeing more drivers kind of slide up and wish that they were on that outside line and right now Garrett Lowe kind of showing that with Falkingham that if you can keep that momentum rolling on the top side right now it's going to be tough to get back up there and Falkingham just kind of left down there as you see even back through the pack plenty of drivers making the decision to try and move around and, and go to the top side to make up some spots worth noting that the top five drivers in this field right now all either are or have been drivers in the coach series and if you want more news and updates from the world of eNASCAR take out your mobile device and scan the QR code on the lower right hand portion of your screen to sign up for all sorts of news updates and more courtesy of iRacing the official simulation partner of NASCAR building off of that point of everyone in the top five either being or Having been a co-series driver at some point, I think we should give some credit to Jose Soldas Jr. running in the sixth position, representing Manchester Community College, uh, originally from Connecticut, the school in New Hampshire, so a lot of New England ties there. But Solis is somebody who I've seen, I've called in a lot of private leagues and broadcasts before. I've seen him race for a long, long time. He's had plenty of speed. Neat to see him having a great run and uh, double racing stripes on any race car looks good. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen more of that in the college series, but that's a sharp looking forward mustang he's got well good you got a lot to follow up i mean yukon right now kind of sitting on top of the world in terms of basketball and you know if you're jose solis jr uh, i don't know maybe uh, coach hurley would be a little bit harsh right now that you're running back at the sixth position but uh try to make it forward and, and you're, you're exactly right solis especially if a track is starting to trend towards the top side uh and where the high line is going to be a factor that that 
that kind of fits right into his wheelhouse. So we'll see what he can do here the last 36 laps or so as we've kind of single filed out, at least for now. Uh, but putting a number of laps on these tires, about 20 or so since these drivers came down pit road. Uh, so we'll see how things kind of shake out. But right now, Wilson still looking so strong and out of these, not quite in as much traffic as he was a little bit earlier. He's trying to kind of do the same thing uh, that he was able to do, or Clampett was able to do with Garrett Lowe, kind of going a little bit higher in three. We'll see if he gets the run off of four. Nice run down to the bottom there for Stephen Wilson as we go on board with Zach Sprouse out of Stafford, Virginia, the George Mason Patriot. I, I'm trying to remember, I think they're in the Atlantic 10. I could be wrong about that, but I believe the Atlantic 10. I know they were in the then Colonial Athletic Association when they made the men's final four back in 2006, way, way back in the day. Yeah makes me feel old because I vividly remember that happening but uh, that green and gold if you're anywhere in the Virginia area you, you're going to know it's George Mason 99 times out of 100. And I think showing you a, a great representation of the roommate life there is uh, somebody back there was <laughs> kind of messing around you know in close quarters but hey when you're sim racing in college that's what you got to put up with and see kind of the flip side of that here John Forbes the number 11 car uh, right now running in about 19th or so has lost a few positions, but uh, you can see Nate Stewart, somebody that we've been talking about a number of times tonight. Forbes making quick work trying to get by Nate Stewart and was able to try to make that crossover and see if he can complete that pass into one, and indeed he was able to do it. Brandon Schillenberger out of Monroe, North Carolina. I think we'll take this opportunity to offer a, a local pronunciation lesson. You look at the name of the school on his shirt, most people would read that as Wingate, but if you are a native North Carolinian like we both are, Blake, I think we both know that, uh, I don't quite know why, but for whatever reason, it's pronounced Wingate, not Wingate. So Wingate, if you are trying to recognize the Bulldogs properly. Garrett Vitton is a long time stalwart of the E-NASCAR College iRacing Series. Uh, we love to see Sparky. We love to see Sparky in the Arizona State Sun Devils represented. Uh, headed to the Big 12 here at the beginning of July. So new adventures for them and their friends uh, a little bit down south in Tucson that I know they wouldn't necessarily care for all that much. And then Ryan Doucette, who's won some big races in his day, also a driver in the Coach Series out of Framingham, Massachusetts, and today representing the University of Southern Maine, the Huskies, uh, for another Northeastern school. Blake, I feel like there's a trend there, perhaps? There's been a lot of drivers out of the Northeast, and Doucette not just uh, doing things in the virtual world, was a modified racer on the real world side of things, has run a number of times at Stafford Motor Speedway over the years, and somebody that, at least right now, up uh, into the 15th position, and, you know, I got to say, is probably somewhat uncharacteristic, I think, of what his expectations uh, would be coming into tonight, uh, sitting back there in 15th. Jeremy Burns, the Longwood Lancer, you see, uh, he, he celebrated and they celebrated another NCAA tournament birth just a month or so uh, ago. Don't remind me. Uh, oh, well, uh, Big South is Big South is Big South. So <laughs> I, I, I hate to bring up some old wounds, but uh, the Navy and blue, I, I'll be a little bit partial because my high school had that Navy and that silver color. So good color scheme there. Jonathan Evans, the next driver that we look at out of New Fairfield, Connecticut, representing Western Connecticut State University. Uh, has an opportunity to figure out what he wants to do, just wrapping up his sophomore year. So uh, he's gonna declare a major over the course of the summer. And I'll be curious to see what he decides. And Elliot White just ahead of him, representing the University of Maryland. Another drive that I think kind of suffered with a little bit of damage, was able to repair some of it, but just enough to still kind of hurt the handling of that race car. Seems like things have really settled out. We see that car in front of him, the Mar Maryland Terrapin car, just kind of sliding around just off of the corner right in front of Jonathan Evans right there. It's Elliot White uh, that's running in the number 27. And somebody up front way off the pace, it's Nate Stewart who is just gonna come into the frame of your screen. He was running in the 18th spot, but lost a ton of ground, and I think had a little bit of contact going into three, uh, perhaps with somebody that kind of caused that. He was able to save it, 
uh, and keep us under green flag conditions, but definitely going to lose a handful of positions after that slide. Uh, this night has steadily just gotten worse and worse and worse for Nate, unfortunately. Uh, he's got more right front damage than he had initially off that contact with Mario Miranda. And then Christian Charbonneau out of Chesterfield, Virginia, student at Dallas Baptist University, uh, known best for their baseball program where they've been uh, pretty deep and gone pretty deep into the NCAA baseball tournament the last few seasons. Also another driver on a VR headset. And you can see uh, when you know, dorm room doesn't necessarily offer the most spacious lifestyle. So to your point earlier, Blake, VR is a great way to save space and uh, maintain uh, your competitive edge in the city. Well, it's a good way to do it because I know when I was racing, uh, it was kind of right before VR started to take off. And, you know, sometimes occasionally you'd feel bad if you were running iRacing or, or NR2003 at 1130 at night and your roommate's trying to sleep and then you're just in there wheeling the heck out of a 10-year-old steering wheel that grinds and is super loud. So uh, nice to see some of these folks don't have quite that same option. At least the screen's not on and uh, your roommate can try to get a little more, uh, little more sleep if you have a sim racer that uh, you're stuck with. You know how these things go, though. The technology always improves, and the folks who come after you always had it better in that sense than the ones that we did. And we get a good look here a little bit further back in the field. This is the 22 machine on screen. That's Joe Armstrong representing Reynolds Community College, the Glen Allen, Virginia native. He's in a really good fight with Alexander Hyder representing St. John's River State College out of St. Augustine, Florida. I think really starting to show you how much these drivers are struggling at the end of this run. We see a number of drivers, some of them just really not able to get in the corner like they want. They're pushing tight. They're washing up into the outside wall off of turn two and turn four, which is so easy to do. And kind of seeing the flip side of that right now with that number 22 of Joe Armstrong, who's kind of sliding around and cars a little bit free, a little bit loose, looking around for a little bit of grip. And trying to put the throttle down to get around Alexander Hyder. Good battle for 16th uh, that these two drivers are putting on here. But 21 to go, James, is still a lot left that can happen in this race as uh, Logan Clampett's lead has kind of started to stretch out a little bit these last handful of laps uh, to a little over a second over Stephen Wilson. Also, as we get a good look at Kristen Charbonneau's machine, the red of the Navy of Dallas Baptist one more time, I have to give a shout out because I've noticed him in chat. Evan Pasoko is watching tonight's race on a plane. I know he's flying as part of work, and I have to believe that that's, that's got to be up there in terms of commitment to the college series. If you can watch this from 30,000 feet in the air, I'd say you're doing something pretty well. Back to the front of the field. Garrett Lowe, Daniel Falkingham, Dylan Alt, Jose Solis Jr. We actually haven't talked a lot about Sacramento State's Dylan Alt yet, so we'll take a moment to recognize his run. He's just been very quietly hanging around the top 10 just about the whole of this race, and all of a sudden, here we are, 20 laps to go, and he's right in the mix with the top five, trying to find some space around Daniel Falkingham, but he's been steadily, consistently there the entire night. Heck, I remember a couple of months ago kind of watching his stream. He was running this car at this racetrack, albeit at different conditions. I believe it was a night race uh, that B Fixed was running at this racetrack a little while ago and uh, just trying to learn everything that he could uh, to try and you know, just get, get familiar with this racetrack, perhaps knowing it was coming up on the College Series schedule. And, in fact, it was Logan Clampett that won that race that he was competing in as well. So Clampett kind of doing... Uh, the same thing to him here. He just has such a great uh, understanding of this race. And by the way, correction uh, there in chat, Evan, it's 39,000 feet that Evan's watching from. So a li little bit higher. All right, we'll, we'll give him the extra 9,000 feet. But yes, the commitment to watching eNASCAR is well respected as we look at Lomita, California's Austin Farr, the Liberty University Flame. In Lynchburg, Virginia, it's where you can find that school. And then Matthew Morton from The Ohio State University at Newark. So not the main campus, but if you're a Buckeye, you're a Buckeye, you're a Buckeye. And Blake, I think for as much as we follow college sports, you know it doesn't matter where you are. If you're part of the Ohio State University system, 
you are absolutely just rabid about Buckeye Athletics. And then there's a Michigan Wolverine behind you, too. So there is that. Well, heck, uh, uh, Chris Holtman, uh, I, uh, I used to work with the, the men's basketball team at Cardinal Webb while they were there, and that was just after Chris Holtman, who's the men, head men's basketball coach at Ohio State, uh, decided to make his venture from Gardner Webb. He coached there before eventually going to Butler uh, for his short stay and then eventually went to Ohio State. So a little bit of ties as uh, you can see Matthews Wack trying to catch the back end of that Ohio State car. Remember, we've seen these two. What was it at Talladega and the trucks? They got together. Uh, yes, it was. It was, a, it was a little bit earlier, about a month ago or so, that we saw a wreck between these two late in the race that kind of reset it a chaotic finish and right now speed I would say is in the favor of that number 18 car Matthew Swack so we'll see if there's a little bit a uh, little bit more of that left uh, here with 15 laps to go in Nashville 15 laps and just about four tenths of a second is the gap that Zwack has to make up on Morton Zwack of course the winner at Darlington in this series back in February so he's got some experience when it comes to getting to victory lane and they've got some experience racing with one another as well and I, I think I know our producer loves loves to see these classic college rivalries carry over into the sim racing world which I didn't necessarily think it would play out as well but it does seem like we talk about Ohio State and Michigan drivers going back and forth with each other more often than not something that tends to happen he almost can't can't help it uh, when something like that happens as we take a look back at uh daniel nanny was racing him in c open last week as a matter of fact but he's out here with the xfinity cars representing ball state trying to make some progress up through the field also somebody that's kind of making uh making their way through uh the e nascar ladder and the qualifying series as well in the trucks and doing awfully well in that so trying to gain some experience perhaps uh, before a contender series effort that would take place in this very race car it would it would you got to be on the path all the way through here's Methodist University's Chris Bryant out of Greenville South Carolina uh, another neat green and sort of gold scheme as he smacks the wall there just a little bit. So Joe Armstrong is going to have the opportunity to move his Reynolds Community College machine just ahead of Bryant. But a uh, good color scheme. Green and gold, I feel like, works on more cars, schemes, things than we give it credit for. But these two are almost in, in the mood to wreck each other. It seems like that's, I think, the second time in the last lap they made contact. Again, we had a we had a shoot around at Methodist uh, a couple of years ago. A beautiful, beautiful campus that they have there. Uh, it's a really, really nice place. And uh, Chris Bryant doing a good job trying to represent them well. Trying to get back up into the top 15 uh, here in the last dozen or so laps. As we'll come around this time, it'll be 11 laps to go now. 10 as the ticker goes down uh, to the last 10 of our 90 laps here. Is uh, we talked about him earlier, Jose Solis Jr., kind of just holding strong right there in six. Hasn't quite been able to find something uh, for Dylan Alt and Daniel Falkingham just up the road and having to fend off, uh, again, a paint scheme that wouldn't be too unfamiliar with some NASCAR fans in Austin Farr. And now Zwack kind of running into some issues again. We talked about him trying to run down Ohio State. Well, guess what? He's got his uh, arm full right now, that 34 of Trupiano. Andy Trippiano, the Detroit Mercy driver, and uh, struggled with pace early in this race. Qualified well, got trapped up on the high side, but he has battled back very nicely and has settled in right at the back end of the top ten. This is the battle for the scholarship money that you're looking here. Tenth place is the last place to get something, so it's effectively, especially if we go green, Trippiano versus Swack versus Burroughs. Two of them will walk away with a little bit of scholarship funds. One of them will go home empty handed. So this could be a fun battle to keep an eye on over the course of the last eight laps. Also, as our leaderboard does show, if you're wondering what Clampett and Wilson and the leaders are up to, Clampett's clear by two and a half seconds. And a close battle, you mentioned it kind of coming down to the money. It's also for some pride in the state of Michigan. I mean, we got Ann Arbor, we got Detroit kind of battling side by side here for the last little bit of scholarship money. His swack is falling back, but holding strong there on the top side. I can, I can imagine that without something significantly happening, uh, this round of uh, Ohio State-Michigan, well, it's going to go to Ohio State this time, but 
great battle going on here. And by the way, Anthony Burroughs, who has kind of made his way up, made up several spots here the last couple of laps. He may have to try and choose somebody to push because there's really nowhere to go here. James, three wide here at Nashville, very difficult to do. And right now Burroughs is just kind of sitting there hoping that these two sort it out so he can have uh, the possibility of competing. As Aaron Brown, the lap traffic going to squeeze up in front of Zwack for a little bit, may have slowed down that Michigan number 18 for a moment. Maybe the biggest story out of all of this, Ryan Doucette, who you're starting to see creep into the picture, gained a ton of time as a result of that lap car just being positioned where it was in turn four. Not necessarily anything that you can do when you catch somebody at slower pace off a corner like that. The big thing, though, is that Doucette is now within three tenths of a second of this battle, as is Daniel Nanny, as is Christian Charbonneau. They're all right there, too. So what was a three-driver battle could well become a five- or six-driver battle in the final five laps. And Burroughs kind of being forced to go to the bottom is that 34? As soon as he was not side by side with Matthew Zweck, said, hey, I can go to the top. I feel like I'm a little bit faster. I can build up a run. But this is setting up a four-way battle for the last little bit of scholarship money that's on the line here tonight. Burroughs trying to make a hard charge here at Matthew Zweck off the corner. Five laps to go. You're not missing anything up front. It is all Logan Clampett. But a great battle going on here just at the outskirts of the top ten to see who can be the last few to try and take some of this scholarship money. Give battle a little bit further back. Elliot White racing for position in 24th. He's trying to hold off Jack Clemens, the Virginia Tech driver, and trying to battle for position there. Those are two schools that have uh, a lot of familiarity with one another. That it is, and again, uh, something back here could significantly change this race. We know with three to go, anything can happen. A caution comes out. Do we see some of these drivers stay out? Do they pit? They're still fighting for every little bit of track position because, again, we've seen these races turn crazy uh, here at the end of these things, so you never know, but that's the last thing that Logan Clampett want. His advantage is now up to three seconds over Stephen Wilson and Garrett Lowe. Uh, as you can see, that Wilson has pretty much maintained uh, over Garrett Lowe since making that initial pass and just not sure if Garrett Lowe is going to have enough for him here in the last two laps. Now down to maybe a lap and three quarters as you see these two fighting for the final spots on the podium and interview order I suppose uh, when we get through with this race and just over a lap's time and maybe a little bit of scholarship money too. You've got one last charge to make if you are the 49 machine of Garrett Lowe as the white flag will come out. Logan Clampett clear of everyone by 3.3 seconds. He has dominated the second half of this race and is cruising to $1,000 in scholarship money and a shot at the College Series Championship next month at Homestead Miami Speedway in these cars, the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Here he comes out of turn four, Trabuco Canyon, California's Logan Clampett, representing Cal State Fullerton, puts on a titanic performance and wins the E-NASCAR College iRacing Series presented by an A-Star League event at Nashville. Lots of love in the chat for Logan Clampett. I think everybody recognized that to be that fast consistently in this car at this track, as you know well, Blake, it's hard to do. And he makes it look so easy in a race like this. But credit to Clampett as he celebrates and does a few donuts in the grass in tonight's winning moment, which is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official fan refreshment of eNASCAR. And we came into came into tonight knowing that this track is very tough. These cars make it a very tough place uh, to come to. We said at the top of the show that whoever is going to show up tonight is likely going to be better and be better in a big way with how tight the margin of error is here. But if you can figure it out and get that clean air and execute it, you're going to be able to drive away. And that's exactly what Logan Clampett was able to do. He got the green flag run that he wanted, and he never looked back.
clamp it victorious in Nashville. Here's a nice Coca-Cola move of the race, and it comes off that restart where Clampett got a great jump, and there was no one in this field that had the opportunity to keep with him. You see that gap just grow immediately. Two, three, four car lengths, and he drove off the field and never looked back. Absolutely no one in Clampett's zip code. Once we got back to green flag racing, they were all left to settle it out for second and third and figure out who's going to get $750. $550 in scholarship money and so on and so forth. But the $1,000 go to Logan Clampett at a Cal State Fullerton winner tonight in Nashville. Clampett victorious, Clampett fabulous. Clampett, now the driver that will get the opportunity to chat with our very own Blake McCandless. Logan Clampett, yet again a winner in the E-NASCAR College iRacing Series. You do it here at Nashville Super Speedway. We kind of talked about how difficult of a racetrack that this can be, but what is it about coming here in these NASCAR Xfinity Series cars that you think suits your driving style so well? Man, dude, I'm... I don't know what it is. I I love uh, I love Nashville. You have to be so consistent with your line here. You have to be just very specific with it, and uh, you just have to stick with your groove the whole entire race and your throttle inputs. And um, I'm just I don't know. I'm just really good at that in this car. Uh, so it just perfectly suits my driving style. Um, you know, it's it's oh my gosh, man! Finally, a race went my way this year, um, and to to sit there for uh, 30, 40 laps, you know, just uh, sitting there waiting for a caution. I'm like, oh, it's gonna come out, it's gonna come out, and it never did, thankfully, and uh, got the job done. Well, you're able to get the job done. You got a thousand dollars in scholarship money that you win tonight. What does that mean to you to be able to kind of help that move your journey along as a student? Um, it helps a lot. Um, you know, I'm probably maybe a year and a half away or something like that from graduating. I'm taking quite a few summer classes this semester. Um, but it, it helps a lot. And uh, thank you to uh, Nace Star League and uh, NASCAR and iRacing and Raymond Smith for uh, – putting on all of this and uh broadcasters as well um everything kind of comes together and ever since this college series has kind of been created um it's it's given a lot of students especially me opportunities um to kind of thrive in school all right logan well again we're happy for you congratulations you win the money you win the race it's a pretty good night for you and hopefully we'll see you back here in about a month or so when we wrap up the semester Thank you, Blake. I appreciate it. Looking forward to uh, getting after it uh, next month. Yeah, we'll see if we can do it. Logan Clampett, your winner tonight. Steven Wilson brings it home in second, but had to do it uh, in pretty difficult fashion. You started from the tail end of the field, did not officially put down a time in qualifying. How was it trying to drive through this entire field with only 90 laps to do it? Uh, yeah, it was interesting. You know, it wasn't my plan exactly to start from the back. I kind of messed up the timing, qualifying and swerving and whatever we got to do before that. But uh, yeah, I started from the back gained like I passed half the cars before lap 10, I think because of that wreck and just had a really good turn one. So that helped. But uh, once I got up there, it just seemed like Clampett had us covered all night. Uh, he was driving away just 10th by 10th every lap. So props to him for that. But uh uh, looking forward to putting in some real prep time for Homestead. Uh, I run this car maybe once every couple months, so it's going to be tough to get back into the swing of things with this car uh, since it's so different than the next gen that I'm used to. So uh, we'll see what happens for the big money at Homestead. Well, speaking of big money, I know you've collected a lot of big money in sim racing, but this specifically, being able to take home um, some scholarship money here tonight, uh, I'm sure that's something you're proud of. It helps you with your studies. What does it kind of mean to you to be able to come out to these races and kind of supplement uh, your studies as you continue to move forward? Yeah, it's really cool to represent the school, University of Iowa. It's also really cool to bring this cool paint scheme out. So I got to thank uh, J.D. Lair, JDR Graphics, uh, for making this paint scheme for me. Um, looks good on the track. It looks better than most of the other things I've been running this season. So 
uh, just happy to have a car uh, that looks good on the track that represents a school. And uh, it's really cool to have that money also in my pocket to help towards our studies. All right, Stephen, we'll let you go celebrate at P2 tonight, driving up through the field here at Nashville Super Speedway tonight. Sure, he'll say it. Go Hawkeyes, right? Go Hawks. There it is. All right, Wilson finishes up in second. We move forward to the 49er in Garrett Lowe, who brings it home in P3 tonight after sitting on the pole. Uh, a difficult race, as it always is at Nashville Super Speedway. It's a racetrack that you nearly won here in the Coke Series last night. Uh, is it a track that you enjoy racing at? Because you seem to fare pretty well here. Uh, not quite my favorite track. Um, I do enjoy it. Uh, I don't. I don't love it, but I, I do enjoy running laps. Uh, traffic makes it pretty interesting. Uh, I think we saw pretty good multi-groove racing there, so I enjoyed that. Uh, it would move around a little bit. So, yeah, it's moving up there in the rankings for sure, uh, and then history is starting to show it. All right, I, I know you continue in your studies at Charlotte uh, doing engineering. I know that's uh, what you're kind of aiming after, but as you kind of head towards the, the twilight, I would say, uh, potentially of your academic career and perhaps even your time in this series, how how much fun has it been to, to come out here, run these different cars, and be able to compete for this scholarship money? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, obviously, a lot of great drivers in this series, uh, Coke drivers, non-Coke drivers, um, and we're all about similar similar age. Uh, in a similar stage in life. So it's really cool to kind of get that mixture in here um, and race against a bunch of good guys and, and have a little bit of fun. I know we're, some of us are throwing doors just because we know we can uh, and leaning on each other a little bit because we know it's good racing. And uh, that's just, just really been fun and uh, really enjoyed it. All right, Garrett, glad to hear that you've been enjoying it. We've enjoyed watching you here tonight. Garrett Lowe brings home P3, the University of Charlotte and the 49ers. A little small update, too. Uh, if you were wondering how that battle went at the very end for P10, see it on your screen here. Matthew Swack and Anthony Burroughs were the ones who followed up Matthew Morton, and they were the ones who round out the group scholarship money, along with everybody else in the top 10. Doucette and Trupiano just couldn't make it happen. Doucette didn't have enough time. Trupiano fell back just a little bit too much. Yeah, Daniel Nanny came up just a little bit short for Ball State as he was kind of moving up towards the front of the field late in the going, just ran out of a little bit of time. See, the interval's pretty steady here, a lot of hard racing, uh, as Garrett Lowe was kind of alluding to, that you had a ton of drivers that were really close, really competitive, racing hard, and for the most part, a pretty green race as well. A lot of green flag racing in this one, James. A lot of green flag racing indeed, no question about it here. You see some of the drivers that ran into a little bit of trouble, Nate Stewart down there. Uh, all that damage really slowed him down. Everybody else here just trying to survive. A lot of these drivers also caught up in that wreck right at the beginning of this race and really struggled to gain any sort of track position after the fact, which I think, again, proves the importance of aerodynamics here. And your final nine drivers in the field a, a lot of these really got hit hard and unfortunately just didn't get the chance to showcase their skill their ability they made it through the time attack qualified into the uh, top split of the college series and might got cut short when that big calamity wreck happened at the beginning of the night one more race in the college series season the championship decider at Homestead Miami Speedway. That'll come your way Friday, May 3rd, 8 p.m. Eastern on iRacing's Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, NASCAR Twitch, and eNASCAR.com forward slash live. It's these same vehicles, the NASCAR Xfinity Series, at one of the best tracks in all of eNASCAR. A fitting place to crown a champion because it really does draw the best out of you. For all of our partners at eNASCAR, Star League, and for our team at iRacing that helps put on everything behind the broadcast, our director, Drew Adamson, and the entire production team, and for my colleague in the booth, Blake McCandlish, I am James Pike. Thank you so much for watching our broadcast of the eNASCAR College iRacing Series powered by Nace Star League for the virtual Nashville Super Speedway. And we will see you for the championship race on the first Friday in May.